Hi everyone, Lizelle Crowley here at the Cool Tool Studio. Today I'm going to show you how to make a wonderful pendant using tiny tendrils and leaves with a set faceted stone that can be fired in place. And this, for this project I'm going to use a wonderful new clay, Easy 960 Sterling Silver Clay. It's an open shell fired sterling silver clay that gives you excellent finished strength and for the delicacy of this pendant it's really essential to have that strength. So what I'm going to use today are a fire in place cubic zirconia, thickness frames, ultra clay pick, tweezers, coil roller and you can use either the narrow or the wide whichever you prefer, tough cards, stone setting punches, round stone setting template this is calibrated to the sizes of the stones, Easy 960 sterling clay and a hydrator, water and a brush, and sanding materials. Let's get started. The first step is to create the bezel for your cubic zirconia. And for this project, I'm using an 8 millimeter. You can use any size you want. You can actually use any shape you want. I happen to be using a round um, because I want to show you another really cool tool that I love to use. The first step for creating the bezel is determining the depth that it has to be. And I've already determined I need my eight, six, four, and two card frames. And the way I do that is I put the stone down, upside down, I lay my frames down, I take my coil roller and pass it over. If it doesn't move the stone, that means I'm deep enough. The other tool I'm going to use is this metal clay stone setting punch. It's a relatively new tool. And <laughs> I'm going to get all the different tips. The thing I love about this is that these tips come in different sizes and they're tapered. So the taper in the hole that you punch creates a seat for the pavilion of your stone and keeps it from falling through the other side. And it goes, I would say the largest I would do would be an eight millimeter down to probably a two millimeter. If you have to go bigger than eight millimeter, then you get into the stone setting template, which Cool Tools also makes and sells. And this is fabulous for the larger stones. So the first step is to create a disc of clay to make my bezel out of. I'm going to take some of this Easy 960 Sterling, which is a beautiful clay to work with, and it creates a really strong finished piece. I'm going to roll it around briefly and then press. And because I'm using the frames, it's going to give me the right depth for this patty of clay. Next, I'm going to take my punch and just cut straight down into that. Take my stone, place it in there, and I'm going to come back in with my coil roller and press yet again. I'm now going to take the two card frame away and press again and that just gives me a nice firm seat into the um, bezel that I've created. Before I move on, I'm going to reclaim my clay from this punch and it's relatively easy to do. I just take my clay pick and I dig in there and pull it out. Alternatively, I could take the, this off and push it out from the back but I find, especially if I'm going to reuse it, I just leave it in and pull it out this way. The next step in creating the bezel is cutting the outer circle. And for this, I will use the stone setting template, the bezel template from Coal Tools. And I'm going to find a size that I think will work with my design. And so this is two and a half millimeter bezel for an eight millimeter stone. So I'm going to hold that firmly down with my hands, take my clay pick straight up and down, and cut around. I'm going to put my finger on that as I pull away the outer clay. That way if there's any pulling, I've anchored my stone and it's not going to be distorted. I'm going to put my clay away. And I'm going to take my thickness frames, put them back, take my coil roller, and press yet again. And that's because as you cut, it kind of distorts the clay a little. And this just gives me a nice flat surface on the top of the bezel. 
So this is ready to go in the dehydrator to dry. After it's dried, I'll sand it and then I'll build the piece. So while the bezel is drying, I'm going to start creating some tendrils. And if you look at these pieces, you see that I tend to make my tendrils all a certain style. They have a lot of curly cues in them and a lot of curves. But when you're creating your own piece, you can make them however you want. And what I usually do is I make them way more than I need and I dry them because ones that I don't use in one project I can always use later on in another project. So I'm just going to start by rolling very slender coils of clay and I want them to be tapered and delicate. And with this Easy 960 Sterling, you can go very delicate because it's a very strong post-fired piece. Sometimes I go too long and if I do, I'll just cut it and roll them both at once to sort of lengthen them. And what I'll do is I'll put them on a tough card. And you know, it's one's thicker than the other, but that's fine. It's good to have them vary in thickness as well as in shape. And the first thing I'm going to do is wet them and let that water kind of soak in. And then I'm just going to start shaping them. And you want to think, in, in the case of this particular design, which I call Romancing the Stone, I think of vines, tendrils, and leaves. I don't really do flowers, but you could. So I'm just going to create some shapes, some squiggles, if you will. And in my studio at home, I actually have a tray, a tub full of different shapes that I've created that I um, use. So I didn't let the water soak in enough and that sort of broke apart, but I'll make a really small tendril out of this and I'll just put this back. Oh, actually I'll use this as a small tendril too because you need them all lengths and all sizes. Maybe I'll make a spiral on the end of that. And I'm going to continue to make different shapes until I have, I don't know, 12 or 13 done and then those will go in the dehydrator and be dried. Okay, so here's my um, cubic zirconia. I've sanded the bezel down pretty far and made it nice and smooth. And I've got all my different shapes that I've created here. Um, you can see some are like curly cues, some have little spirals on them, some are long, some are short. And I like to have a good variety to work with when I'm creating my design. A good pair of tweezers is essential. I really love this set that Cool Tool sells. It's perfect because it's got just a little bit of um, roughness here that makes it grip the pieces nicely when I go to pick them up. And I just start to um, audition the pieces and build a design. And it's kind of like putting a puzzle together. Um, it's not something where I go in with a plan and I know this piece is going to go here and this piece is going to go here. I sort of try pieces in different places and see how I like them. Um, and once I get, I would say, three or four done, I start adhering them. Because if I don't start adhering the base pieces, as I add pieces on top, they're just going to move around. So I know I definitely want these three. I like the way these are positioned. So I'm going to go ahead and adhere them. And one of the things I absolutely love is using this water container. And you'll see why in just a second. Um, in order to place the piece, I'm going to dip it. And having this little, like trough-like water container allows me to drip the entire piece. And then I'm going to push it up against the stone. Then I'll do another one. And it's good to wet the whole thing because sometimes as you're positioning, you might need to slightly bend a coil to get it to fit perfectly. And the fact that it's wet will allow you to do that without breaking the coil. So um, the next one is this one. I'm going to dip it in and just place it on there. 
And now I'll start building again. And I, I'll play around with some dry pieces first before I actually... Um, and I, it's, it's a good idea to try them from all angles and at different um, placements. And sometimes I might like a piece, but there's a, a section of it I don't like. I'll just break that off. And then I can place this one. And for me, I like this kind of spontaneous um, building of the piece without having it pre-planned. If you wanted to, you could sketch a design and purposefully make each of your elements fit that sketch. But I really prefer this kind of random placement. I actually don't like that sticking out so far, so I'm going to set that aside. Pick another one. So I'm going to call that my basic design. So this is going to go back in the dehydrator to dry. I'm just going to, again, take my brush and kind of conform this one down. To me, this almost looks like a bouquet, the way that I do this. So this will go in the dehydrator. After it's dry, sometimes what I'll do is I'll just brush water over the whole thing just to make sure I've got good bonding everywhere. I'll put it in the dehydrator. After it's dry, I'm going to flip it over and wet it from the back. Then I'll put it back in the dehydrator. And then I'm going to add other embellishments like leaves. In this case, I've got leaves and some little balls. Okay, uh, sometimes I'll, you know, sort of see how all these ends are sort of meeting. A leaf over that will help to kind of integrate that. And then the final thing I'm going to do is attach a bale. And what I like is to do the bale as a wet coil, and the bale can then be incorporated into the design and help pull the whole thing together. Okay, so here's my piece that's been drying um, in the dehydrator, or you can dry it for several hours in open air. And the very first thing I want to do is turn it over and take my brush. And do you see this little skin around all the coils? I want to brush that skin away and move the um, clay from the skin into the areas where pieces connect. And I find that this helps to create a much stronger bond as well as it helps smooth away any roughness on the back of the piece. So my brush is not soaking wet. It's, um, it's wet, but it's not dripping wet. And I'm just sort of melting that skin back in to where it can help form a stronger bond where the pieces are connected. So I'm just going to do this real quick, and then I'm going to stick it back in the dehydrator for a few minutes, and then I'm going to embellish the front. Okay, so here's the front of the piece, and one of the things I like to do is kind of integrate the piece with some leaves and some, some, sometimes some tiny balls. I, I especially like to cover this kind of grouping of um, ends with a leaf or two. And the way that I like to do that is to find any texture that has... Um, leaves in it. You can also hand sculpt your leaves, but I find it's much quicker and easier to do it this way. So this texture has lots of options for leaf-like textures. It's got actual leaves, but even some of these flower petals could work as a leaf. And the way I do this is I take a very tiny pinch of clay, and I find with Cool Slip, I'm good for two or three impressions before I have to worry about relubricating. So I'm just going to press this down. And there you see I have a little bit larger of a leaf and I can just shape it with my finger to give it that leaf-like shape and give it a little um, visual sculptural interest. So now I'm going to really moisten where I want that to go. And I want this to kind of go over these 
ends here. You could leave them if you like the way that looks. I just like to, I feel like the leaf sort of integrates it. And just kind of put my leaf in there and just lightly press. Okay. So, um, I feel like one leaf is enough there. If I wanted, I could put other leaves. And now I'm just going to kind of look at the piece and see if I feel like I need a leaf anywhere else. I think I might try one right in here, coming up around the stone. So again, I'm going to take a little blob of clay. For this, I don't, you could use the coil roller to, to, to make the little tapered blob, but I just usually use my finger. I'm going to make it a little no longer and narrower this time. The more tapered it is, the more um, leaf-like the shape will be. I'm going to find another area where it has a pretty leaf, and then I'll press. Here's my other leaf. I'm going to, again, pinch it to give it some sculptural shape. And again, I thought I would try it right in here. So I could moisten the back of the leaf too. I think I will in this case. And again, when I moisten, I'm being very generous with the water. Water is inexpensive. Tuck that in there and just lightly push it down. And you see how working, the reason I do these embellishments wet onto the dried piece is that I can conform them to fit and flow with the piece rather than just having a dry leaf that I'm just going to stick on there. So this just creates a more flowing, um, natural look. Again, just as with the leaves, I like to do my bale to integrate it into the piece. So I'll get my piece made and put together, and then the last step I do is the bale. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. And for that, I'm going to make another long tapered coil. So I'm going to pinch off a small piece of clay. Start the coil with my fingers. For this, I will use my coil roller. And I want it to have about the same um, heft as the coils I used in the actual piece. So I want to get it nice and long and tapered. It's okay if one end is slightly fat, because that's the end that will attach on the back. But on the front, I want it nicely tapered. So once I get that made, I'm going to place it on my tough card and I'm going to dampen the whole length of it. I can be generous with the water. And now I'm going to press this down where the bale will attach to a fairly strong um, area of the piece. So there's where these two pieces connect, that's where the bale is attaching. And now I can bring this part up and around. And I usually don't use it, but if you needed to, you could stick something in there like a coffee stirrer or a toothpick. And I just sort of shape this coil. The other benefit of doing this wet on dry is that if I make a mistake, I can scrape it off without hurting my original piece. And it gives me a little, um, I don't know, a freedom to shape this bale piece and integrate it into the design. I'm making some little curly cues here. I just want to make sure that this is standing up. So there's my finished bale. If you can see, it comes up and around, and it's got a couple of little curly cues, and it just integrates nicely into the design. 
It's got a little kink in there that I don't like, so I'm going to just trim that little kink out. And there you go. That's the finished design ready to dry. The final steps after drying will be a light sanding, and I'll also make sure I clean off the stone. If you can see, there's a little clay residue here. I'll clean that off with my needle tool, and then I'll also clean the stone with alcohol before I fire it. Then it will be fired. So here is the finished pendant, front and back. You can see how beautiful that stone looks in the midst of those tendrils and leaves. Here's the bale ready to put a chain on. And it's so strong, you don't have to worry at all about how delicate this is. Here's a couple of others that I've made. This one with a pink, pink sapphire. And here's another violet, but it's a smaller. You can really have fun with this project. Visit our learning center at cooltools.us for more cool jewelry making videos. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and be sure to sign up for our email list to be the first to hear about new videos, new products, and other cool stuff from Cool Tools.